What's up, everybody? Welcome to Normieville. Well, we, we call you Normies. So in this particular episode, I want to talk to you about more terminations in cable news. Now, this today won't be about ESPN, but in the last few days, we've talked about all of the terminations that have happened in ESPN to include the likes of Matt Hasselbeck, Jalen Rose, Jeff Van Gundy, Matt Kellerman, and other people that maybe should have been let go in these people's places. People like, uh, you know, uh, Kendrick Perkins, and of course, public enemy number one, Malika Andrews, which she's always throwing somebody under the bus. And really, uh, honorable mention her sister too, by the way. But Stephen A. Smith has also said there's more terminations coming and that he's not safe. We understand all of that. However, there's one person that's still employed with ESPN that had his own show on HBO, which has now been uh, terminated. <laughs> As you can see right here from the New York Post, and it reads, HBO cancels game theory with Bomani Jones after two seasons. Now, again, Bomani Jones, in my opinion, should have been one of the few people that should have been on the hit list to get terminated from ESPN. But I wanna read this article talk about his HBO show and talk to you why I also believe that Bomani well, Jones is a is lame as a ESPN contributor. He probably knows nothing about sports. Let's read the article. HBO is saying no to Bo. The network is canceling Game Theory with Bomani Jones Outkick reported after two seasons of low ratings following the sports journalist jump from ESPN. The show, a talk show style format, described HBO's website as discussing timely issues that transcend the world of sports premiered in 2022, but struggle to gain viewership. Now again, much like ESPN, which is getting low rates because they are putting world issues, politics, and gender, and all those kind of things into the world of sports, but Mario Jones' attempt here and HBO's attempt to have a show where they intermingle uh, society and lifestyle with sports uh, failed miserably, and I'm here for it. Target down! Now, Bomani Jones is a contributor on ESPN. Nobody really watches when he comes on there or even cares about his opinion, honestly. Bomani Jones is more of an SJW type of guy than a sports commentator or contributor or even analyst. But you'll see why here in a second. Uh, the second season, which ran early in 2000. 23 was also broadcast on sister network TNT as a lead in to their NBA doubleheader, but was still unable to gain traction. Now, you know, your show has to be uh, DOA. If they put your show in front of NBA games as a way to gain more viewership, because people are already ready to watch the NBA games most of the time, right? So, th Having a show in front of that, which will keep people on your network watching all the way through the game, even before or after, is very good, right? More viewership, and it will make you more popular. They actually front-loaded you to make sure we got the viewership from the upcoming game to come to your show. And so your show has to be very lame if you can't get viewership in front of any NBA game. You win. No, wait a minute. You lose. You lose. That's right. According to Outkick, each session lost on average of over 80%. Bitch, ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way. Each season lost on average of over 80% of its leading viewership at both the HBO and TNT broadcast often failed to register on the top 150 of cable TV shows. Now, again, we're not talking about the top 10, top 20, top 50, or even top 100. Much like, you know, some of the Billboard charts, stuff like that with music. We're talking about the top 150 cable program shows on TV, and you cannot make it. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, bitch. That has to be a very low-rated show and a, very sh and a show that, 
again, it's DOA. Nobody wants to see it. Nobody wants to. Nobody. It it says a lot about your show, and actually says about you too that you're not that very entertaining. If, if you lost that much viewership over two seasons and you couldn't even make it to the top 150 after being front loaded, after your show being front loaded ahead of NBA games, amazing. Now I want to read this part right here, this first sentence, and I'm going to repeat it, but I want you to. I'm going to read it first. I want you to listen. Listen very good. This is why I believe for one. But Maya Jones is not good as an NBA is a sports commentator or analyst or whatever has anything to do with sports. And for two, another reason why he probably pivoted to sports, maybe to make money or maybe to have some kind of relevance and also to slide his little message in there. Okay. Jones, who began his career as a music critic and radio host. He did this to make money. He doesn't know anything about sports. Music critic and radio host. What does that have to do with sports? He's not a beat writer. He never been any kind of analyst on any low any low rated show. He doesn't have any history of sports at all. Music critic, radio host. And then somehow he makes it on ESPN. Somehow try again trying to weave topics of the day into sports. And you wonder why ESPN's rating is getting low. You wonder why people are getting laid off. And you wonder why this guy's show right here gets canned after two years of the lowest ratings probably ever in the history of HBO. Gained following during his tenure at ESPN for his willingness to discuss political and social issues in the context of sports. Do we want to hear that? Nope. He was a frequent guest on Highly Questionable and Around the Horn, which nobody really watches. Well... I don't know if you out there, the viewer might watch this. You normies out there. I personally don't watch it. I've seen it, but never could get into it. He was a freaking guest on Highly Questionable and Around the Horn while also hosting The Right Time with Bomaya Jones on ESPN Radio, which he eventually turned to a podcast, I'm pretty sure, because that title has nothing to do with sports. The Right Time is probably something about social issues with sports woven into it so that way he can stay on ESPN. Jones was the co-host of High Noon with Pablo Torre, which was also canceled. You can see you all right. Yeah. I sure can. It's Bomani Jones. Look at that forehead, by the way. You see that? That thing, what is it, what is it? It's a video five head, huh? Wait a minute. Five head. Bitch, ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way. This was not HBO's first foray into sports culture politics mashup that has failed. While Real Sports with Brian Gumble has aired for years and has been a success, other projects such as Any Given Wednesday with Bill Simmons and Back on the Record with Bob Costas have similarly not lasted more than two seasons. Again, no surprise there. HBO confirmed they were not renewing Jones' show to Awful Announcing, which I'm sure is a blog or some type of uh, article, whatever. Jones continues to host a podcast at ESPN, though sources told Outkick that his contract is not expected to be renewed in August as the network goes through massive layoffs. <laughs> Congratulations to ESPN. Uh, again, there's a few other people at ESPN that y'all need to take a look at. Again, please, Malika Andrews, Malika Andrews, Malika Andrews, get her behind off the network we don't want to see her or hear her voice ever again there's plenty of other females on espn that can host and commentate and give analytical information about the nba besides her all right in any case but my jones takes an l at hbo looks like he might take another l at espn and i'm here for it thank you once again for taking another episode of normieville you know me, I'm just a normal here to bring you the latest and greatest in sports news, entertainment, and politics. Let me know what you think about this. Scrub down in the comment section. And please, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell on your way out of the door. And I will see you on the next video.